Imagine being 17 years old with little to no family support and you're being released from the juvenile detention center after being detained for four months. You're about to turn 18 and graduate high school and you start to wonder what comes next. How do you become successful even though up until this point you've had no one there to help? This is a sad reality for many teens that come through the juvenile detention system. Although there are many supportive programs within it, there's also a high recidivism rate. This means that children are reoffending, which could later result in them being incarcerated as adults. The first important thing to talk about is how trauma impacts the way that we function and how resilience determines how we cope with our trauma. We all have an ACE score, and it is based off of the Adverse Childhood Experience Inventory. This looks at different traumatic experiences that we've had as children. It was created by Kaiser Permanente, and it allows mental health professionals to measure trauma. This inventory looks at things such as abuse and neglect, parental substance abuse and mental illness, or if a parent has been incarcerated. It can assist in predicting physical and mental health issues that can arise over time. These 10 short categories can tell us a lot about the traumas that we carry. 90% of children in the juvenile detention center have at least one ACE score. 75% of them have been severely victimized in a variety of different ways. They have three times more ACEs than the general population. Almost all of the youth that I have met have an undiagnosed or diagnosed mental illness. These children can grow into adults who have substance abuse issues, anxiety, depression, unhealthy relationships, as well as physical health issues. It's imperative that we intervene at an early stage. We need to provide them with reassurance, guidance, and resources. One space that I have learned how to provide guidance is in my art group. I started doing art with teens in the Fond du Lac County Juvenile Detention Center a little over two years ago. We meet weekly to create art and talk as a group. We use creativity to make things normal for just one hour. When they take their art home with them, it serves as a reminder that something beautiful came from something ugly. It was a creation that came from a time of despair, but serves as a reminder not to return. Art is a substitution for those who don't have access to mental health counseling. It gives them the opportunity to talk to someone who won't judge and will let them vent their frustrations and feelings. I must admit, not having knowledge about their charges made it difficult to fully connect with my group at first. But I have learned that for me, it's better to know a person before the case. Art has provided that connection for me. This experience has allowed me to meet some extraordinary youth who have endured more than most of us can imagine. Many people would judge them for the mistakes that they have made, but I knew that they were just like my friends many years ago. They made bad decisions that contributed to their time in jail, but it didn't take away from the fact that they are people, and people make mistakes. These teenagers are communicating through their behaviors. On the surface, we see a child who is rebelling and has behavior issues. What we don't see is what's under the surface. Their basic needs may not be met outside of the jail, which could include having proper housing, food, clothing, or water and electricity in their homes. Many of them are lacking meaningful connections with adults in their lives, especially positive ones. These lack of relationships impact their self-esteem and need for attention from anyone. Maybe because their physical safety is threatened or they may have issues with attachment. The most prevalent issues faced are a need to belong, lack of important relationships, repressed emotions, and a low self-esteem. 
We've had many kids come in with many different stories. We had three teens who saw their friend take his own life in front of them. Because they ended up becoming detained, they didn't get a chance to go to his funeral. Many of them have witnessed a murder or someone being seriously harmed. Several of them have lost numerous friends and family to murder. I believe that this sort of trauma impacts the way that they behave, which results in them becoming detained because they can't fully process what has happened to them, and they do that by acting out. I've gotten to know a girl who's coming in and out of the jail who's being sex trafficked. It was hard for her to realize because she had no family support and was on her own. She thought she was being taken care of by her pimp because she had nothing else to turn to. These are just three stories of the many that I've seen in a short amount of time. I have one more to share. This is the story of an individual who inspires me to this day. After being detained for eight months, she achieved success through the different programs at the jail. Before I tell her story, it's important for me to remind you that eight consecutive months for an individual in our detention facility is fairly rare. Lou's mother was a sex worker who was addicted to drugs and didn't know who the father of her child was. Blue was born cocaine positive and was removed from her mother at three days old. She went through two foster homes, one each year, and was adopted when she was three. As an infant, she lacked stimulation and attachment, which later resulted in her being diagnosed with reactive attachment disorder. As a teenager, she experienced a lot of anger, which impacted her ability to receive and give love. Her adoptive mother didn't care about her well-being and used her mental illnesses against her. She was around 17 years old when her mother rescinded her adoption. Blue ended up in the juvenile jail because of drug charges, which led her to me. One of the biggest things that she felt was important was letting people know that there are interventions in place. Specifically, Blue was placed in the Promoting Alternatives to Corrections through Education program. This program caters to specific individuals' needs and offers a variety of support services. For Blue, it was counseling, allowing physical activity, applying to college, and learning how to go about life as a newly independent adult. The beauty of this program is that it allows individuals to have autonomy in their interventions. PACE isn't just a program to help with their current needs, but teaches them how to have long-term success. There's an interdisciplinary team that allows the individual to work with many different people. Blue said that the PACE team helped to teach her problem-solving skills, grounding, and proper ways to react. She said that it greatly helped with her emotional and psychological well-being. Part of the program required that she go to an inpatient mental health facility upon release from the juvenile detention center. Rehabilitation helped her realize that if you want to do better, then you need to surround yourself with people who have similar values as you. By sharing Blue's story, we understand the importance of reactive measures. We need to talk about preventative measures. Children and adolescents can greatly benefit from resources that help them grow self-confidence and realize that they are enough. After working two years with youth in my community, it's important to talk about how work like that can help them grow as teens and children. When you give kids opportunities and resources, it's amazing to see how they can take their disadvantages and turn them into advantages. The key, however, is to help them realize that they are deserving of this. Look into places where you can help youth in your life or your community. 
Take time to get to know them and their struggles. Be present. Remember, they are children, and they are going to make mistakes. Forgive them. Help them get to a point where they can do things independently, but ask for assistance when they need it. I encourage you to look into volunteer opportunities at your local juvenile jail. You can help in the art room, classroom, library, or even just coming in to play games with them. You can help make meaningful improvements to their lives by being a positive role model and setting an example to guide them. Think about if every adult in this room made a connection with a child in need. Our futures could be so much brighter. Thank you.